Hi friends, welcome to the Art Cellar of Houston. My name is Sarah Lowe, and today we are going to be working with watercolor. My favorite fall fox that we try our best not to do every year, but I absolutely love the fox, and so I could not resist a watercolor fox painting. So I have this guy here as a sample, just so y'all can see what we're gonna be working on today. And I'll zoom in close. So you can see here, it's a simple little fox that we're gonna be working on where the leaves are wisping right by him and moving on around him. So he's just so happy and content where he's at. So inside your watercolor painting kits, we have um, little tubes of watercolor paint. You also have a little package of salt. I did not use salt for this painting, but it is there for texture and it is something that you might wanna play around with. It's a lot of fun to use salt and gives a nice little effect around your creation. You also have your paint brushes and paint palettes. So grab all of those. You can see here my paint palette, I already have my colors squeezed out around. And then my center section is where we're going to mix the watercolor paint. So the brushes you have, we have big, medium, and small, and I used all three, <coughs> excuse me, all three for this painting. We are going to start with painting the fox portion first the most complicated part of the painting, and then we'll do the wind and the leaves after. So to get started, we wanna grab about six glops of water. Yes, the professional term, glops. Oh, I'm kidding. So I dip my brother brush into the water and touch it down to the center section of my paint palette. So you'll see here, let me move this out of the way for a second. So I'll grab one, touch, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so I have a nice puddle of water in my center section of my paint palette. Now I'm going to dry my brush bit and then grab some yellow. So yellow is the lightest color. You don't need a lot of paint. So you see right here, I have definitely a lot of paint on my brush for watercolor, but that's okay. We wanna um, make sure that first layer of watercolor is very light, which means has more water included. Then I'm gonna grab a little bit of red because red is very powerful and does like to take over. So you can see here, a little bit of red, mix it with my yellow and I have a gorgeous orangey color. Now, because it's fall, I'm gonna grab a little bit of brown. And now brown also likes to take over. So try your best to do a very minimal amount of brown mix it in there and we're gonna have a nice rustic orange color. Now, if this color is not bright enough for you or not the color that you're looking for, play around with the colors. With watercolor, you always wanna start with your lightest tones first. Then we'll come back and do medium tones once that light tone layer is dry. And then at the end, we'll come back and put all the fine detail work. So you'll see the um, shadows for his arms, under his chin, all of that. That is gonna be with your lightest, uh, the, not under his chin, but yeah, well, a little bit. Those are all the darkest tones that you see right here. His little nose, the eyes, all of those were done at the very end. So the initial first layer is going to be with this darker tone. All right or lightest tone, excuse me, not darker, lightest tone. So grab your brush, biggest brush, and we are gonna start by drawing little triangles for the ears. And then we're gonna do a frown between the two triangles, okay? Now for the fox, you wanna have ears that are a bit taller. The good thing about watercolor is if you make a mistake, you can dry it up instantly. So we're gonna do almost like a V with a little connection in between. And then once you have that V drawn with your connection in between, now we're gonna start to pull down that you see right here. So we're gonna pull down all this color to another V right there. So pulling down towards his nose and then on the out layers, we're gonna go here and out. 
Now on the left side of your face for the fox, you want the hair to be a little bit shorter because we're looking at him at a side angle. So we're gonna have everything on the left side of our guy to be a little bit smaller and shorter than on the right. Okay, and then once we have his nose, comes to a nice little V right there. We're going to skip, do you see how we have that nice and, oops, sorry, there we go. Okay, so now that we have that, we're gonna skip where his white is right here. We wanna keep that the paper color. So the bottom portion of his cheeks are gonna stay white. What we're gonna do underneath that is his little chin. And I'm okay with him having a nice big chin. Grab some water and pull all of this down. See how it's a little bit lighter? All you see is the water there. And we're gonna start pulling down the outside and leave the center of his body. So this part will remain white and then we'll pull the orange down here. Once you come down to his legs, we'll just go out even further. Okay, so for his hips, where his, his uh, legs are, the back sides of his legs. So we'll come down on this outside, on the outside, and then keep pulling down on the outside only. If you find that you accidentally put too much color in the center, it's okay, grab your napkin and blot it away. That's the great part of watercolor if you don't like it. Add some more water and blot it away. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna pull out around the hips. Add some more color. I love the way he's looking, so cute. Okay. And then for the tail, we're gonna come out and around. Now we don't want to do too much of a tail because I do want to do, later on, I do want to add the shading bits on his tail here. So I'm just going to put a very, very light layer of orange. And then as I get closer, we're going to leave that a little bit light as well. Okay, so now we have a very rough cut little fox. So cute. Okay, so once we have this all filled in, now we wanna go in with our second layer of love. Before we do that though, we need to make sure that this dries. So step away from your painting for a second or um, you know, go grab some water. Uh, give it a couple of minutes to dry. It dries pretty quickly, but if you find that it doesn't, <coughs> if you put too much water, excuse me, if you find that you put too much water, it'll take a little bit longer to dry. So once this layer dries, I'm gonna grab my medium brush and a little bit of brown. So I'm gonna add more brown to this color. And I'm going in with a richer tone because I'm gonna do some more shading on his legs. So we just finished this part and you can feel it's still cold to the touch. That means it's still wet. So maybe I'll start at the ears since that part seems to be a little more dry. We'll come in here and just put our second coat on the ears. So I'm gonna put it at the tip at the top and on the front portion only. Tip at the top. and then front portion only. In the center, I'm gonna grab a little bit more, let's see, on the sides. So I know that I want his nose to come in right there. So I'm gonna start to fill in his face with a little bit darker color.
where we just put, and his face is starting to form, right? So I put the darker color on the tips of the ears and in the front, and then again on his cheeks, but I left the center portion open, okay? That means without color. Um, and you can see a little bit of the color starting to move to the center. So I'm gonna come in here with my napkin and blot away that color, okay? <clears throat> there. Now on his legs, we want to start forming those in. So I'm going to start drawing like the number 11 and then a nice little frown underneath. Okay, and then I fill it in. So that's gonna look like this. Once you're done drawing that in, you wanna wet your brush. And if you're wondering, I did switch over to the tiny brush. You can use the medium brush or the tiny brush for this technique. So once you draw the number 11, you wet your brush and then you will use the water to blend out that watercolor that you just applied as the number 11. Okay. Same with the other side. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of color and then we'll shade down for his legs number 11, and then the frown, and fill it in. Dip your brush in the water, dab, dab, dab on the napkin, and then blend that color out. I do want to grab a little more red and make my fox a little brighter. Okay. I'm gonna grab on his hip, I'm gonna add a little bit more color here. And then on this side too. On the right and left sides, I'm adding more color to his hips. Dip your brush in the water cup, dab, dab, and blend it out with what's there. When I'm referring to blending out, <clears throat> I want the color to look seamless all the way down, okay? All right. So I'm gonna keep doing that same technique all around with his shoulders, with his hips, with his tail, until I'm fully complete with the shading. I'm gonna gradually go from lightest to darkest tones. fox drawn in and you can see here still a little bit wet but <coughs> excuse me um the darker shades you can see here we added for the nose on the mouth you want to go slightly up on the left side and then more on the right side okay so basically it looks like he's got a smirk more so than you're looking head on and there's a smile so that's going to give it that look Underneath the chin is where we added a little bit more shading, and then we added a little bit more shading on his paws, so you're gonna see dark. Now, burnt sienna is going to be more of an orangey brown, which is great for doing this specific painting um, in those brownish tones. For um, Dick Van Dyke brown, that's gonna give you more of a blackish brown look. So just kind of keep those, in, those two color ideas in mind when you're working with watercolor. Once you have your fox drawn, now we can start doing the swirls in really any color you would like. For this one, I actually mixed together blue and red to make a nice purple and then um, mixed it with this orange that you have here. So I like to reuse colors. I'm not one of those that likes to you know, wipe it away and start from scratch. So since I have now an orangey brown right here, 
I'm gonna grab a little bit more of this beautiful red, mix it with this, clean off my brush, and then I'm gonna grab a tiny bit of this Prussia blue. Grab a little bit more, okay. I don't wanna take over too much, but you see how it took over pretty quickly. So now that it looks like a nice gray, we're gonna clean off our brush and grab some more red. Oops, too much red. Okay. Let's see what this does. There we go. Now we're getting to a beautiful little purple color. We might need to add a little bit more red here. There. Okay, look at that. Very fall color that we have working here. Oh, I love it. So that's the orange that I already had. I mixed some blue and now I'm going to mix, and I've mixed red right after. There we go. And we are done. So check out that gorgeous color that we have here. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so we're gonna clean off our brush and where I want the swirls, I'm gonna take my largest brush and add those to my paper. Okay, so you're gonna have just water on your paper. And we're gonna do maybe one, two, and then three little lines with water. Okay. Now that we have these lines of water here, we're gonna grab the color and add the color to the lines. And your color is only gonna stay in the area where the water is, which is so wonderful about watercolor. It won't go beyond that, that line of water. So it's a great way to trap it in for your painting. If you don't want the water to be shifted all over the painting, then, um, or the color, excuse me, then you just add water on your paper where you want the color and then it stays right in there. If you find that this is too dark, just add more water to your color and you can always blot it away once you're done. Okay, so where you don't want water, is, or excuse me, where you don't want color is where you're gonna blot away at this point. For me, since I didn't use salt last time, I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of salt on this area. And we'll get an interesting little texture here. Okay, all right. Oops, I forgot this one little area here. There we go. All right, so now that I've got that, I still have some color left over. So I'm gonna use this color down at the bottom and then I'm also going to fleck it on. So for that, grab a little bit of your color and then you'll just hit the brush and it'll fleck on, right? Here, here, and here. At the bottom, I'm gonna add some land. So we're gonna go underneath his paws with some of this color. Okay, so we have a nice base for our background. Once we're done with that purple color, I'm gonna grab a little bit more red. And now we've got a completely different color. It's so pretty. So it's nice plum color here. Now we're going to a little bit more rosy color. And I'm gonna put lines around my swirls. Lines. So this is gonna give that effect that the wind is kind of whooshing. And up at the top, I'm gonna add a little bit of red here. So it looks like my purple is changing colors. Gorgeous. Love the way this is turning out. If you get too close to your fox, just blot that color away, okay? All right, so I need this color to dry, or I need this water to dry before we can do anything else, otherwise the colors will merge together. So I'm gonna take a short break. When I come back, I'm gonna add yellow to my color here, and we're gonna continue to make the leaves as well as more wind. All right, so now I've mixed yellow with my red color, and I'm going to use this to make the little leaves. So here for the first one, I'm going to start off by making a W, okay, very loose W, and then from there we'll go down, and then a nice line in the center. 
Okay. So when you're done, that will look like here. So we'll continue to do a couple more leaves like that around the swirl. And then we'll add some color towards the bottom as you've seen here. Towards the end, I want to take my tiny brush and grab some of my brown. Okay, so this is my Dick Van Dyke brown, not my, um, not the other brown. But I'm gonna take this color and I'm going to put a little line on the leaves so it looks like the center of the leaf and just kind of try to add a little bit fine detail here. On this guy, I'm gonna go down. There we go. And on some of the leaves for this second go round for me, I decided to add pink leaves. So you can go in really any color. You can go red and pink and purples. You can go yellows and oranges, whichever you prefer, okay? The fine detail that I'm doing on these leaves when I'm done, then I'm also going to do some on the ground here to mimic what we have on our ground here. So I make sure that whatever colors that I do, the leaves, I add some in the ground as well as in the sky with our, you know, just banging on the brush because I want to make sure that all colors are in the sky as well as on the ground. Once you're done, sign your painting and send us a copy. We would love to see what you create and share with us how you made it your own and put your own personality into it. So thank you times a million for supporting our station. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below or you can always shoot us an email, artsellerhouston at gmail.com. You guys have a wonderful holidays. We'll see you next time. Art is happiness, make it your own.